Hey everybody, this is Mel Function with the Narrative, another podcast live stream here in Fungaree, Northland, New Zealand. I'm quite excited today because I have a friend of mine uh, who's, who's, you know, has done a lot and is doing a lot for a lot of um, future and probably current artists and up and coming, you know, uh, I can't let it say like the big names, you know, that will be in the future that we can see come out of our beautiful city here in North um, from Rain and in Northland itself and through New Zealand. And maybe someday, like I've met some people who actually work overseas who are based here, or they might place themselves overseas and to, and to know that they might have come from this school that we're going to amazing thing for me. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Philip Hetaraka, uh, mind that I we you know kind of got that I kind of went to school with and we're going to talk a bit about that here in Whangarei uh, but also a bit where we hooked up because of the comics job I used to run where we had gaming and stuff and that's the other passion of it so I'm gonna let him introduce himself and then we'll kick off from there awesome uh, thank you there Aru for um, that warm welcome um, so yes, about myself, uh, I am, I've known Aru for well, many years back, uh, we won't go into the details, but uh, <laughs> basically he has covered um, that we did go to school together, which was um, at North Teke in Whangarei. Um, so where I come into with this, and I appreciate you um, offering this platform and the spotlight on... Um, on your podcast here. Um, so I'm, I'm basically here working at the design school um, and I, uh, what that is, it's a private school um, set up in 1993 um, to help people capture their creative talent and gain the skills and qualifications needed to enter design courses um, at diploma and degree levels um, or to launch their design career. Um, so that school is based in Palmerston North, so that's our head office. Uh, that's where it all started. Um, in terms of Northland here, Whangarei, we, I believe we started the school here in 2014, 2015. Um, I came on board the school in 2000, at the end of 2015, 2016. Um, so I'm basically the graphic designer here at the school and um, basically the doors are open for uh, those who are interested in, in design and in, in particularly in creative design. Um, yeah, so a bit about my background, I guess I've been um, dabbling in, in and out of design all my life. Um, had a, about a 10 year break, you could say, yeah. uh, from not so much as completely your design, but um, in career, um, which led me and my wife to Australia. So we were there for about that amount of time. Uh, but when we returned, um, yeah, I think I thought it was about time to to um, reignite my passion that's been sitting there and just yeah. you know laid to rest for a bit. So no, it's been a, a, a pleasure to be here at the design school that was enabling me to to um, do what I do here. Um, so yeah, thank you again, oh, Malu. That's all. That's great. I um, mean, like. Tell me about Aussie, like you went over there, were you there for 10 years or were you just there for a few years and and what was yes. the reason for going to Aussie? So it was a change of lifestyle, I guess. Um, mm. So my wife and I just thought we'd go over for a holiday and ended up living there, <laughs> basically. Um, so yeah. the industry I, I was into back then was the hospitality. Okay. Hospitality industry and um, it's been the best thing for me, mm. to be honest. 
Um, what were you doing in there? Hospitality. Was it like a, yeah, we like chef, waitering, um, tourism? Right. So I had a number of roles. Firstly, I started off with uh, McDonald's. So prior to moving over there in Australia, I was working here at Whangarei, Kamo, uh, McDonald's. Yep. Uh, and I had just become manager, I believe. And yes. And then I, I was only here for about a year before we moved to Australia. And then um, I carried that over in Australia. Um, Did you as, like work your way up to management at um, McDee's or were you just had a management degree and went and do that with that? I worked my way up. Worked my way up from, yeah, from bottom up, um, crew member to manager. Um, and then over in Australia, I got into more of a, a store, store manager role over there um, in various venues, I guess. So I wasn't working at just one um, site, uh, but across multiple sites in Australia. Brisbane, Australia. So. so, so having gone from like just being, uh, you know, serving uh, food at McDonald's, working yourself up to management, and then being able to, you know, change of scene, went to Aussie, and working in McDonald's still at different areas. So, did you enjoy that? Like, I mean, from someone who's like basically walked in and said, "Hey, here's my CV," you know, I have an art, di you know, diploma of in arts, but I would like to work in food you know and then end yeah. up and you know managing a place and then carry on what was you know was it the scene going up into aussie to be able to walk into mcdonald's there and say yeah i've done this here what about yeah sort of um it's quite funny actually i i approached the hospitality industry in a in a I guess daring way. So the thing with me, I would, I, I get bored real quick. Yeah, I, I, I got bored real quick. So I needed challenge, yeah. and and I, I th believe that was one of the dares. I just jokingly said, you know, I'm going to work at McDonald's, and then voila, yeah. I ended up there um, at Carmel. Here. Yeah. Um, took that over to Australia, and I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, really enjoyed mm. it. So. What really um, made me stay with McDonald's um, for that amount of time? So, I I was with McDonald's for about three to four years um, yep. total. Um, and what made me stick with them is is the the interaction, the communication with um, people. Um, right. that it allowed you to do so. I got really good at speaking with people, speaking to people mm, mm. Um, and understanding their needs and, and all of that, as you would in, in any hospitality. Um, so that gave yeah. me a set of skills that um, required, you know, um, actually you can use in your day-to-day -day life. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's what I loved about it. And Yeah, I kind of find like interesting because like you know every like we've kind of come to a place where everybody wants i'm going to go into management straight out of school i'm going to get the big dollar and stuff and you know you need to pay me this much money or i'm not doing it and i and i the reason i bring up this the hospitality why and so on because before i even you know went to um, art school i was i was doing my second year at chef school here in Pangaree at barge park this is like about 80 Oh, sorry, 90, 94, 93, right? And then at the end of it, I was like, I'm not enjoying this. You know, it's, I, I enjoy cooking. I cook every, you know, almost every day, new things all the time. But, and then like, I don't want to be a chef. I don't feel like I need, I, I, you know, and I was doing what I was I don't feel like that. Then I went and at the end of it, I had all this artwork that done and I went and applied for the flat arts. And that's how, you know, that's how we met together, you know, and uh, I guess same school and uh, same class, I guess. And then you moved on to 
uh, Murray, uh, Murray Design, I think it was, wasn't it? Upload yes. Murray Design. Contemporary okay, so, the arts. Right, and that's that was a great. I, I love mixing and mingling with the students there. I thought that was like back then. This is like ninety three. The atmosphere yeah. at North Pack was all about collaboration. It was all about anybody could do anything. Nobody had a problem with anything. You could go and drink and go and hang out with this class or that class. Go with the drama students. You know, go with the applied uh, arts photography students. One of the weird things is where I'm living right now, I remember in about 94 maybe or 95, I actually came to this place for a uh, a party, a, a polytech art party from the, from the visual arts photography class. Right? Who, I, who I'm friends with now, you know, yeah. but like uh, some of them, you know, and like the way this place behaves is of this uh, the synergy of work at Fung Ray is, is it always amazes me and has amazed me for the last 10 odd years since I've been back. And you see all this creativity that comes out of the, that year or that that, that sort of um, decade. And you, see, you know, and I look at you and I go, we're about the same age, we're in 50-ish, 40-ish. And I think you look at the amount of uh, artists and creative people that have come out of that that sort of decade is amazing. And that's a lot of them have stayed. So what made you, you know, go from, you know, spend that time at school? Did you finish your degree at Polytech or diploma or what happened So, um, good point. Now, I, at the first year I didn't. Um, so I was testing the waters basically, testing the waters, and um, it wasn't until the second second year yep. um, that, you know, I was like, no, you know what, this may, might not be for me, um, and at that time, you know, there's, there's a lot of things happening um, in, in yep. Whangarei that, you know, were, while well, I was experimenting with, so... Um, yeah. I kind of skimmed the surface um, at the first year. Second year, then, yeah, I, I just knuckled down. It's like, you know what, I, I've had a rest. <laughs> and yeah. then um, pursued to continue and finish it. Um, and which led, yeah, to the third year. And um, from that point onwards, it just opened up. Um, what was outside of Northland, really, Whangarei. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and the world's your oyster after that, once you've got that, once you've had a taste of your first, you know, certificate, degree, um, diploma, yeah. then, you know, again... What did you do then? Like, I mean, like, you know, your world's your oyster, what, what did you step into? Did you, did you um, because I didn't graduate, right um yeah. so i'm wondering like did you graduate did you you know get your paper and carry on or so much like you no yeah not not for the first three years because i again yeah. i was you know just scratching the surface but then, then yeah. um, after that moved to auckland and okay. yeah then i um, studied in Auckland and, and a whole bunch of places just to finish off my my um, yeah. degree. Um, and okay. yeah, that no, was uh, it was a, a a different scene, you could say. Yeah. Uh, outside of Northland, so and I think it was more of myself. Um, getting to communicate with others because I was very shy back um, back in Polytech very yeah. shy I wouldn't say boo to anyone um, and it, it took again hospitality to bring that out of me um, yeah. and to be able to have the confidence to stand up and speak 
public speaking is another thing. Um, so, oh man, yeah. I was, like I, I talked about, I uh, did a thing about it, like I cried on my first public speaking right? in high school, yeah, 15 yeah. years old. On stage, I boiled. My eyes just boiled out, no, boiled out. Like I was that. That, there is a that thing about fear of speaking. I never even knew I had fear of speaking until you yeah. get up there and speak and you realize there is 40 people oh. in front of you and they're your same age. They're not old or, you know, or younger, but they're your age, your high school mate, you know, age. Don't know you. And that's fear. So, I mean, then you're having this, this experience of actually working other people. How did you get out of that shell? Like you say, you got out of the shell. How did you get out of that? Again, hospitality. <laughs> yeah. Um, because you're forced to deal with customers. Um, right. And and over so many years, I mean, I have been in hospitality for around about that 10, 11 years. Okay. Even more. Um, but... The initial step of that is, um, or even overcoming that fear of speaking, is just to do it, you know? Yeah. Even if, like yourself, if you you just cry, um, yeah. that's all good too, you know? No. These days, uh, it, it is a bit different than back when we were at school. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's a little more controlled, and, and that's similar to what the school is, what I bring to the school here. Um, yeah. It is a little bit controlled as to how you deal with your your peers, your students, and your customers, yeah. and so on, and clients. Um, yeah. So, yeah, back back then, in the 90s, it, it was a bit scary, um, almost as mm. if you were... Uh, just beginning to walk in a way, so everything's new. Yeah. Yep. yep. Everything was new, and um, for myself, I couldn't really latch on to anybody or um, who I could follow to be become confident as such back yep. then. Um, so again, it was just yeah, you either stand there and just look like a statue i guess that's what happened to me a lot just thank you sit down <laughs> yeah um yeah so not even a word but yeah until now it's different obviously yeah i mean it's you know when you're kind of like i mean especially now you're dealing with students of you know was it high school and older age? Or what is the age school, the design school, what's the age for that? So 16 plus mm -hmm. uh, okay. is the age, so, age group here. So you basically say, what's the age that people can leave schools at right now? Because I, I remember when, when I left school, it was 15. Because I'm a high school dropout. Never graduated, you know, and so on. But now I have a degree. I have like certificates, having no nothing, but you know, now in the world, like you're saying, you get to experience it, you get the doors open, uh, you're like, I like, I left home when I was 16. I moved to uh, like 16 and a half, going on 17, went to Auckland. Uh, my, um, I started working in a biscuit factory for about three years. The first day I walked in, I was like, it's so friggin' hot. I'm never coming back. I was there for three years. I had I had a Maori I had a Maori uh, female who was working next to me because we're on a, like a on a um, on a table, right? Like so, like you know, like you have like um, the chip, chip thing at at, um, at McDonald's. So there's a steel yes. table, and we pack the biscuits there, and we put in the oven. So the size of the oven is like about two meters by two meter. It's about three meter high ovens that you walk into. So the first day I walk, walked in, I was like, I said to her, I walked with, walked home, because it was only about, a, about three, three miles from home. And I, I was walking home and I said, uh, I can't remember her name. I said, I'm not coming back tomorrow. 
I'm Indian. I can handle it. I'm supposed to handle the heat, right? Dude, the way I swear to that place that first day, three, uh, four o'clock, five o'clock, I said, never coming back. I, you know, after three years, I made so many cool mates. I, uh, you know, had you know, long lasting friendships. Uh, you know, like I had a Rotorman friend who was like a, uh, a little person, right? Um, and then I had a Pakia friend and his, uh, a Tokelauan friend, right? So, you know, all these different people that work with me, Tongan, all around me. And, and Indians from Bangladesh were the only people who owned it. And I was the only worker who was not, you know, even from that city and not even part of the, that even people who owned it. So as an Indian, I was a stranger to everybody else as well. And so at 16, 17 years, but until... I think until I turned 20, there were three years I was there in that environment and like the whole world opened up. Uh, and during that time, did you, when you moved to Auckland, did you have that experience as well? Because here in, here in Whangarei, we're basically, at that time in the 90s, we're like two na nationalities, right? Bicultural, majority, 80%, 90% is bicultural. What was it like for you experiencing that the Pacific Island community or the Asian community in Auckland at that time? You know, mid nineties. Oh, I very um, very interesting. Very interesting is what I thought of Auckland. However, uh, in saying that, um, I kind of with my schooling um, pre going to moving to Auckland, um, I've my I was brought up. Um, in a multicultural school, I guess, okay. which is Tukiponga High School um, yep. at the time. So very diverse, very diverse. And I was used to um, that diversity there. Um, yeah. Being at that school, I was kind of labelled as a nerd, I guess, as you can say. Yeah. Um, but what struck me is... is um, the fact that all my friends were every other culture but Māori at Tikkunga right. High School, and yeah. um, it, w it took my brother to to um, point that out. And it was towards the end of the year, and he was totally the opposite. All his friends were all Māori, Māori Pacific. Yeah. So I'm like you. Everybody I knew was like. Um all my friends were like every other culture but India, right? So, you know, yeah. How, so, so how, having been pointed that out to you by your brother, what was that like? Oh, it was just an eye open. I was like, no, 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 I do. I do have friends. Name one. Yeah. And I was stumped. <laughs> yeah. um, from that point onwards, yeah, that changed. I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, yeah. But back then it wasn't a, a bad thing, you know. No. Um, it was a good thing to to be diverse, and and my friends saw me in that same light too. They would question, they go, "Oh, are you from mm. here? Are you are you Marty?" <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I did get that, and so taking that on to moving to Auckland. Um, it, it just continued, and it, you know, I saw everyone as the same, pretty much. It, it yeah. didn't affect me at all. Um, in fact, I think it was a stepping stone for me to, you know, to actually reach out to others and start, you know, my confidence yeah. in public speaking and communicating with others. So, yeah, no, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed. Auckland. So, how long were you in Auckland Sorry. for? Uh, oh, testing my memory. Um, Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, we looking wow. at about 90, 98, 99? 99? Oh, no, no, so, no. This, this would be no. for... I would have been in and out. So, mm. so from the 
early 90s, mid 90s to the 2000s. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, I bounced around. Um, yeah. At the time I was completing certificates because um, I wasn't dedicated to to uh, any other degree or diploma. Um, so what I mean by that, I studied Te Reo Māori, um, yep. so in both Auckland and Waikato in Hamilton. Yep. Um, and then I did try to go back to applied arts um, in yep. Hamilton, uh, but then, yeah, uh, wasn't for me. Um, yep. And to be honest, I don't know why why it wasn't I think my mind was just all over the place at that time um, and I was doing yeah. jobs here and there um, but yeah okay so let's talk about um, you you went after that you went to um, Australia you came back how do you get into design school I mean like you, you've come out of like I mean you not only do you have a pretty good background in arts now you have certificates degrees in arts but now you've gone over to Aussie and, uh, you know, you've gotten this confidence by working yourself up to management level. But not only that, you've actually done it in two different countries, right? You're not just done it in New Zealand amongst, you know, your own people kind of thing, you know, Kiwis, right? But you've gone into yeah. Aussie where, you know, it's a totally different environment. And then you've come back. What, what brought you back? So, like with most uh, Māori families living abroad, family, family mm. usually brings you back. Um, and that was right. the case for me. Um, so yeah, um, family is, is the foundation of who you are, yeah. basically. So, it, it was an unfortunate, um, uh, way, I guess, to to have. Um, we were doing fine in Australia, however, um, yeah, um, with with your family, they weren't doing too well. So um, we thought, no, you know, it's time to come back and spend more time with, you know, the time that uh, your family has left. So. Yeah. Um, that's what ultimately brought up, brought me back, um, my wife and I back to New Zealand, yeah. and it's been the best thing ever. Um, yeah, best thing ever. I know the options and and um, that you have outside of New Zealand mm. is you know you can make as much as you like millions thousands yep. millions um, but in the end you know it all amounts up to um, what you're going to do with it you know right what are you doing yep. with that um, so throughout my career my working career uh, it hasn't really been about the money not yep. at all um, so I don't think there was one job that I've been to that I have made it about the money. No, mm -hmm. it's, you've got to love what you do. Um, right. To make it, basically. So, um, I'm one of those where, yeah, um, I just love what I do, love what I do. And in turn, I'm sharing that knowledge sharing my knowledge right. what i've picked up and experiences yep. um, in life and passing that on to others um, but yeah so and family's been a big part of uh, that um, which i should have mentioned in the beginning you know family <laughs> is the foundation of of who i am um, but yep. yeah um, so family is ultimately what brought, brought us back to new zealand and um, I guess led me to where I am now, and right. that in itself so, is another. Yeah. Yeah, no, carry on. I'll just let you finish this, and I'll get to my 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that in itself is a, another story, um, a great one at that. So I'm not sure if you know of um, a friend of friend of mine. Um, so she was working here at the design school when we moved back to Whangarei and she, um, she had heard that we're, I was back in, in the country. Um, right. So she, she basically um, hit me up and said, you know, I'll, why don't we meet, go and grab a coffee somewhere and I'll, I'll tell you where I work and you know what I've been doing. Um, yeah. At the time, I was working at the hospital um, okay. as a barista. So. Yeah, I remember that because when you were when you were come, um, being at you know playing get you know Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff at yeah at um, yes at comic store at the comic store, I knew as a you know I knew you you know, you're the nurse right or you're you know you're working at the hospital and such yeah and with you know when I came back three years ago I was like or four years ago I was like he's teaching Wait, what. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so you so, had this meeting. Yeah, had had this tea, coffee, um, sat down with yep. her, and uh, she introduced me to to the school, um, and introduced me to her bosses, and we we got to you know speaking and sharing, um, much like what we're doing here, and and yeah. Uh, long story short. I I got a email with a job offer that night. Um, wow! And yeah, so my friend was setting me up basically, setting me up. Yeah, yeah I had no well, clue I mean, what was happening. Because she, well, she, I think she she probably realised that here's someone with so much experience, but also with so much qualifications as well. Why is he doing this thing? You know, and it's like. Why can't we grab him? And it's, you just got headhunted, right? Yeah, That's basically what basically. happened. You got headhunted <laughs> without even the career. Uh, what is it? The if you sign up to your careers thing, you know, the guy that goes headhunting for other people. You actually got somebody came to you without that extra payment. Somebody else. And yeah. So you got the email. What happened after that? Like, did you just go? Oh, this is, you know, this is great. I'm just going to do this all. How'd you see oh, that? Absolutely. Um, I was like on the phone. What did you just do? <laughs> yeah. No. So I. Um, I can imagine that from you. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what? Um, no. I, I yeah. took it all in um, that night. I was like looking over at my wife, going, oh, "I just got an offer um, from the school." So I took a week to to um, iron things out with my previous um, employee, port employer. And um, yeah, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. So um, my talent is just, you know, I haven't really released or gone out there and um, shown my work at all. So why not just share it? Um, So then, yeah, and accepted the job and here I am. So this is about 2016, 2015? Yeah. 20, so you've been there about... Early 2016. So about six so years. So did you... Yeah, so did you just get straight offered into the management role or did you have to do a tutorial, teacher's role for a couple of years or how'd that happen? Because you're already, yes. you're already qualified as a manager, right? Yeah. So... So that, that was... Um, uh, Oh, I, I wouldn't say an advantage, I guess. Um, yeah. But it, in a way, it did help me um, mm. within, you know, having that backing. And um, so training was provided on in, on the job, so, yeah. and which is ongoing, uh, which is great yeah. also, so. It is ongoing, um, so training is a part of it that you do have to complete um, papers to 
to be able to yep. expand or do anything further than what you're capable of. But um, yep. yeah, no, I didn't really do anything outside of that. I was just pretty much slotted straight into um, a tutoring role. So, um, and yeah, I, I guess it was my first tutoring role. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think if, if it is or not. <laughs> no, I think it was, so, um, yeah. So, so what was what was expected of you as you're coming in? Because, I mean, you got headhunted out of, what were you doing before? Like, you were at the hospital. What was your role yeah. at the hospital, and how long were you there compared to, you know, been here for six years at design school? So, I... I came back to the hospital, I was only there for about a year, I guess, yep. for about a year, and um, I, I loved it, I loved yep. it, um, and you know, I still can do it to this day, um, yep. so I was a barista. So I was a barista okay. uh, waiter at at, a, at the cafe at the time um, at the yeah. DHB, yeah. and um, I just loved serving coffees, making them, and yeah. um, so that transition um, I did miss. I did miss. Mm. Not gonna lie, um, and so but being open to the community and you know the the shops around you know where the the school situated in town so sure. i was able to um, um i guess quench my thirst uh through the cafes that were around town here so <laughs> um so at times yeah yeah let's talk about the school itself now because like six years of uh you know coming into a teaching role and like you said you didn't teach before you now you're teaching and now you've gone up to work yourself up to management role now what is it like from being a student an art student right being an art teacher and design teacher especially in graphic design i mean we kind of have a similar um ideology with like well, creativity i mean uh with design and stuff like that but I, I, from what I what I've seen around at the school itself, there's so much uh, different things that happen there. You go from cosplay to designing products to designing, you know, just posters and all these different things. Whereas um, it's kind of like it reminds me of at Polytech, but without the glass blowing. And without the you know the jewelry side that I was involved with, just craft design, but you're more sort of like hands-on sewing. It's kind of different from you know from what you guys are doing compared to what everybody else is doing. That sense, it's like uh, you know, it feels like you you design your cost um, your because there used to be a fabric school, right? There used to be a um, pol uh, the Polytech used, Polytech used to do a um, I think it was like a fabric design school or something like a tailoring school yeah, they, back in the they 90s. They did have a fashion uh, yeah. fashion course so, running there. Right. So now you've got that. But on, on top of that, you've got the production um, designing of products and the business side of that uh, and the commercial aspect of that. But you also have like um, 2D as well and 3D uh, digital stuff or is it just two D. So, um, basically, we we teach at a foundation level. Um, so, and we cover uh, all creative industries. Um, okay. So, we get students coming in wanting to be uh, animators. Uh, awesome fashion fashion trends um, starting yeah. their own labels so uh, we've had a really diverse uh, a 
amount of creativity here walking through our doors. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we cover just the basic design principles um, mm -hmm. so that you're able to go into any creative industry. Um, so that's that's what we basically um, have here at the design school. Now moving right. forward to that or moving forward with that, it's it's more than just a qualification or a skill that you're you're getting from us. Um, I've inserted a lot of uh, my, um, I guess, life skills uh, into mm -hmm. what my delivery. So, um, yeah, for myself, it's it's more providing a, a safe space for for creatives um, right uh, opposed to you know um, here's a place for you to to gain a certificate in in arts or design yeah. so um, you yeah. are getting There's that a, but you, much more on top right so, you, so they're not walking in with and walking out with a paper and that's it you know, that's and right. they're coming in with their own ideas about what they want. Because, I mean, we live in, like, I love this, you know, I, I can harp on about, and I always do, about this actual generation we live in of technology, right? You know, a few years back, if you said you wanted to create a game, and I, and here's a true story. I When when you talk about brand design, I, did, I went to a business school at Regent, right? And I spent six months, I think three to six months, designing my own logo and coming with my own brand as part of a business course, a three month short business, small business course. And this is way after like studying and all this. I actually got uh, re made redundant at about 27 years old from a job I'd worked for three years uh, back in 2001. So I had to do a course, just got married, did this course and um, came up with my own label t-shirt designs, uh, did the whole clothing and everything, right? Next to me, and I can't remember the gentleman's name, he's a married guy, similar age to me, right, about 20-something, and he goes, you know, I want to design, a mate and I are thinking of doing a, uh, a game, you know, a software, a game, on the console. Nobody understood that. This is about... 2001, 20 odd years ago, 2002, right? Yeah, about 2002. And we couldn't understand what was going on there, right? But, I mean, not what, what, what I could understand was that the whole, he had it so worked out. He was thinking in the thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of what this could do, what he was going to do. And for us at that time, and I could look around, nobody had a clue. Now you say it. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. Uh, okay, what app are you going to use? What software? Uh, we, have a Google search, mate. We didn't have that 20 years ago, right? No. You know, I'm, I was looking at some of my phones today because I was, I was going through some wiring because I just work at, I had a technical tech friend over at Mike Kelly who's running this uh, uh, Northern Artist Talk uh, web, um, you know, podcasting thing set up. And they spend a lot of money, and, and I hope a lot of people will support that. But, um, and I was looking at the phones, at the different phones. And way back then, there was no, you know, I, I had a separate computer to jack out with my uh, with my mobile that would let me get on the internet. It was a compact PDA, which meant like a uh, personal, uh, personal device unit or something like that, you know. Uh, and it, um, assistant, yeah, personal. Dis so there was two pieces of little friggin' bricks about this size, right? Phone next to each other, which let me go on a compact, uh, Canon compact computer, whatever it was, or Hewlett Packard, whatever it was, that could let me search the website separate to my little mobile phone because I couldn't have the same thing. That cost a thousand bucks alone, just that part, right, to get on internet. And so, but here's a guy, right? 
next to a person who wants to do Wicca. Uh, is it Wicca? Wicca baskets, right? Right. And here's me wanting to do clothing, and here's he wants to do this. He's got this brain, and he's designed all these characters. He's gonna go and do this, and he's just doing a small business course. And now you would go, show me what you got, and let me find you someone to help you do that. 20 years ago, there was no one that I could think of that could actually come next to that guy and say, hey, you know, I actually succeeded. We actually set up my, our own brand. We were good to go. We, you know, after a while, the clothing company just had to take a by, by lot, you know, sideline while I went into my film degree, right? But now you've got a place here, design school, where you can go in and you would have someone, if not right there, down the road and if not right down the road at the other design school who could advise that person to take that idea right to the end right so how do you you know and here's absolutely what i'm getting to is what i'm getting to is next to that person you have someone who's designing a clothing right and is thinking about de designing a costume to do cosplay and that's all they're thinking about. Maybe they want to do a cosplay business. And now, in this generation, in this time, in this age, you can make that into a business Absolutely. just to design costumes. So how do you, you know, how do you deal with that? Because as a tutor, you've got so many people coming in with so many ideas. Like you said, diversity of ideas, diversity of creativity, walking through that door going, this and this and this is what I'm thinking. And you know, and it's not going to be like my time, where the person has no clue how to make this person go to the next level with that. Yes, so that is a, a really great. Um, you painted that really well, um, there, Arun, uh, especially with the. I don't even know if you could call it talent anymore. Um, because I've been, I've been around it. I've been amongst it for you know, for so long now that it's just become um, the norm for me. Um, so yeah. now, everyone that I see has talent. Um, right. Whether whether or not you're here for a creative purpose or um, you're going next door to. Um, be behind a, a coffee machine, um, yep. upstairs for hairdressing, whatever it may be. Um, now I see everyone has talent in their yep. own mind. It's, it's more for myself as how do we um, extract that or more of the ideas that the individual has and bring it right. forth, um, bring it forward so that um, not only they can see, but others can enjoy um, seeing with them. So, um, and there is a lot of talent here in Northland. So right. much talent. And like, like you mentioned, um, we've, we've had students coming in, uh, starting off with, you know, they've, They've had a passion for um, cosplaying or anime or drawing, um, watching movies. Music is another um, creative um, side of what, not what we do here, but um, we do have uh, students that have that ability, that creative creativeness to be able to um, take their music to the next level. Um, well, uh, talking about that, right? So tomorrow I'm going to be interviewing um, Boss Paint. If I'm, if my, yeah, if I got it right, he's an animator, cartoonist, who does music videos for other people. So they bring their music to him. He does. He creates these creatures and you know artwork that he animates himself for that. So if oh, you nice. have a classroom like the creativity that you guys have at design school, when I walk in, I go, wow, this is great. You know, it's like me going, 
this is my world, right? Yeah. And so you, like you said, there's students there who do music, but then there's right next to them who have their talent, skill, animators and artists who could actually come up with something for that person to take their music to the next level. Because it reminds, it reminds me of Gorillaz, right? Corn, you know, yes. Freak on a Leash, one of the greatest, you know, metal songs that came out in that time in the 90s, which basically had an anim animated, um, you know, um, music video. And so yes. you kind of, and this is why I kind of love, love this, what we, what we do as well, but the way of mashing that's, you know, different people with different people in our community. Just saying, look what they're doing. Look what somebody else is doing. And how, how do you say, you know, how do you teach that to them? Because I, I'm always about how do I join people together? Yeah. That yeah. musician to that artist or to that cosplayer, uh, to that game player, you know, whatever their skills are, all that, you know, to make them work together to, to send them to the next level together or, you know, in time, right? Um, and the reason I say that is because when we started doing Plunge, I just had, you know, Hinu said, hey, I got this, you know, have you thought about this? We said, yeah, cool. She said, come and see us when you have the, you know, when you come up, with, you know, if you decide to do it. So I did. And I said, don't with Leonard, right? Lynn, uh, one of our friends um, who yes. actually, you know, who, who's now managing, uh, curating uh, he who I love, right? Uh, and basically, I sat down with them and he said, have you thought about this? 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 Have you thought about these people? Have you thought about that? And I'm like getting my brain just getting expanded. I'm saying, yeah, I do have a management. You know, I do have this, but uh, mm, uh, what about this time? Mm, okay. You know, learning all this because he's teaching me what I need to know if I want to go to the next level. So how do you do that with totally individuals have never thought about that sort of thing and they're just coming in hey i got a piece of paper like i did when i went into you know when i went to art school i mean here's some drawings i have done over the last year while i've been drinking right and yeah, doing yeah. my uh, my uh, my uh, my chef's course and spending all the time blotched out of my brain but here's some pencil um, you know coloring colored pencil drawings because i've decided i want to go into art and I'm sure you're going to have some of those people coming in with like this, or you're going to have more qualified people because I've been teaching themselves YouTube. How do you, you know, what is that like and how do you administer that? It's, it's absolutely awesome. Awesome. I love it. Um, it's, it's my forte to be able to um, deliver what I do to, to students as such as um, what you've mentioned there. Um, and we have got so many and have had so many students walk through our doors um, with those dreams and aspirations um, and ideas. So uh, the way I deal with that or uh, I approach is, is basically I'm also learning. So I'm putting myself down to their level so that they're able to understand and um, yep. move forward rather than me being okay I'm you know I'm your teacher your tutor um, yeah this is what needs to be done no I go down to the level and uh, and just basically um, they're teaching me as well as I'm teaching them so it's it's a win-win and and I'm sure it's it's now it's a cliche that you know everybody that you meet yeah. is your teacher now, um, yeah. and, and that stands true for me. Um, mm. So I never see myself as you know uh, a tutor per se, although I do yeah. have that role here. Um, yeah, I am more exposing you know their talent, and yeah. you know. I'm I'm getting them to realize their dream basically, and right. um, whether it's for um, I don't know 
videography, cinematography, um, you name it. We're, we've had a whole lot of these students come through. Yeah. Um, not only that, so um, I'm going to go back to the, the family aspects of things. Right. So, and that's the okay, way Hold on design. a bit. Yes. Hold on for a bit. So <laughs> I remember, like, just on the artist part of things, and then we'll go into the family thing. So in the old days of the 90s and 80s, of the terrible artist era of the poor artists, if you're a poor artist, you, you, you're an artist, right? If you're a poor artist, you're an artist. If you do this, you're an artist. You've got to be flamboyant. The thing I find about now is how do we make our artists successful? Um, how do, and, you know, how, how do we get them from thinking about, yeah, I just, but I just want to do this. It's like from that to being, hey, listen, if you do this, 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 you could be successful. And you know what? Not only that, but you could actually help other people. And not only that, but you could actually become a, you know, do more with what you got. How do you step, do you apply that into what you're doing with the students? Because I know everybody that's going to come in is like has different ideas, right? And different thoughts about what art is and how to apply that. Whether they just want to learn something and go home and do their own thing, maybe in 10 years put out something. Or someone who is continually learning by taking what you're teaching them or the other teachers are teaching them, going home, practicing that out and and putting into practical thinking and then coming back and saying, yeah, I think I, I, will, I can make a career out of this. And th and the, in the past, it was like, if you're poor that's and an artist, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're still an artist. Now it's like, listen, you got to keep working and working and working so you can be successful at this and be something better, you know, at it. And how do you kind of see, you know, do you see that happen with the students now? They're not like we used to think about, but now, you know, not a tag, but an actual career. Yeah, it, it is a bit tricky um, when, when you're looking outside of uh, school. Um, yeah. Where to go from, from here? Um, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as an artist, um, and so on. So, with me, I do see that a lot within the school here. Um, yeah. Like the options. Are, sorry, it's set. Um, You can mute your mic. Yeah. Phil, you, you can mute your mic. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Just mute your mic. Or I can mute it for you. Yeah. Hey, guys. So, yeah, I mean, um, I think when I was at, um, while, um, you know, while Phil's away, the reason I mentioned the whole not a tag, but a career is that. When I was at high, when I was at art school, we had people, we had seniors, like the like um, like the next level, um, like a third year students would like, you know, as a, as a first year student going to Polytech, I you know doing applied arts craft design school, I had third year students behave like artists, you know, just I'm an artist, and so they would live that artist sort of thing it was like this 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 cloak that they wore now when you say you're an artist it's because you do the work you you actually see a career in it and you see um you know something that you can live and make a um, future out of but, but back then it was like oh you create a piece of work and that's an art and then for the rest of the year you do nothing and and I found that to be really weird because I was like, I don't think that way. I don't think that that's how I you know, create 12 works a year. And that's art. I'm like, 
I create all the time if I'm, you know, jumping and singing, uh, jumping from one thing to the other thing to the other thing because it, it's it's a it's a lifestyle career thing. It's not just something you just tag onto yourself and everybody goes, oh, there's an artist. It's not, you know, I don't feel like think at now and now just, you know, this current generation, we have so much available for us all to actually make a lifestyle career out of it where we're not sort of behaving in a way that it's just a tag we are on our back or but actually a you know an actual uniform that we wear all year round all the time and um yeah so i think that's why i think um it's a, you know that's why i love this this whole aspect of design school because i think that when you have something like the design school built when you are able to cover so much you know, so much practical side of it. And I think that what you offer, and also Engine Room, right? What Engine Room off offers, and the other side of that, that more um, digital side of that, it becomes such a great sort of synergy of what somebody, you know, you can take that little piece of paper and make a costume and then go and compete at Benina, right? This year, that, you know, because Lynette was telling me, right? So Benina's coming yeah. up. So you could. Your students could basically you know, create something in the classroom, put it together, and then and sew it together there in the classroom, and then take it. Whereas before it was so so divided and so many different areas, you know, like you said, you got photography, you got uh, animation, uh, you got um, fabric, uh, fashion, as I took, you know, we just mentioned. Um, and what other things are they learning there? Uh, so, uh, obviously, uh, numeracy and literacy is a foundation for all courses, um, so yep. we do cover that. Um, but mainly, uh, graphic design and fashion and textiles design is what we offer here at the design school, um, mm. from NCA level 2 to 4. So, okay. students that are still at school um, are able to join the school, our school for um, a day or two days a week and gain credits from us towards their that's very different um, their school yeah, yeah so um, we do offer part-time um, yeah. here at the school um, and that's really great for us I mean um, it's not only keeping um, our full-time students in the loop of what's happening in in tertiary and secondary schools but um it's it's yeah it's keeping a, a good well-rounded um a creative space for everyone mm. um and i it's something that we all enjoy um being able to be you know sharing um our yeah. ideas with those who are still at school um, and those who are out of school we have some that who have diplomas degrees masters even um, on our course mm -hmm. in the past um, and they've just solely jumped on because they wanted to they've, they've done it all and it's just a yeah. hobby that they wanted to extend and pursue so um, and it's yeah. great to you know to be able to um, deliver that to to these individuals also and you know and now they're they're out there doing what they love uh, whether it's yeah. Um, helping out with web design, so coming up with um, icons, logos, um, just graphic elements, yeah. um, and so on. So it's it's been really great yeah. here at the, the design school. Um, well, in terms of one thing, one thing I um, because I'm a I'm a big big brain guy, right? Um, and this what I mean is when I mention big brain, is I visualize. I'm all about vision, and and you know it's it's not that I have a big brain, but it's because I think of so much stuff that we can do in Fung Ray that we can take to the world, and so my big brain says, you know what I want? I want a design. Uh, you know, I want an animation school. I want a comic school. I want this. I want that because I want to see people succeed in what they enjoy. And what they make and what they'll create but not only that i want to be successful enough 
where I can harness their um, their skills into what I do, you know. And um, I think um, Lynette is saying here that you do great, you know, you do great work. Love the feel of the design school. And, oh, thank and you, she's Lynette. right about that, right? And she, yeah, I agree with it because I I like walking in there and seeing that. And the other thing is that, you know, when someone learns the skills, how do you take them to saying, hey, now that you've got the skill, you've got your paper, you've spent this time here, uh, two years or three years, how long is a diploma degree is what, three years? Two years yeah, for diploma three. or was it a year diploma? A year diploma, three for degree. Awesome. So, I mean, like, like, uh, if, what do they do next? Like, how do you think, what is on offer for them next? And uh, whether they, do they, you know, one thing for me is like, how do we keep our students here? How do we keep our yeah. skills here? Bangray and Northland. And if we teach, if we're spending these skills from our two teachers and our tutors to impart all this knowledge from our own local people into our own local people, then why are, why are we going to let them go away? So I'm like, why can't I, how do we keep them here? And what is, what is on offer for them? Yes. So that, that's ultimately the goal, right? Just to keep our yeah. students um, um, here. So uh, that our community grows um, along with them. Um, that's definitely um, the goal for us also, uh, for myself. Um, because like when we were back in our time, you know, we yeah. didn't have spaces like where I'm at now. Um, right. Yes, we had Polytech. That was like thousands of dollars to enter. Um, right. So I'm on, still in debt. But, <laughs> right. And yeah. um, no other place offered something like this other than outside of Northland, Whangarei. So therefore, right. um, my traveling started uh, the same age as you, I guess, around about 18, 16, yeah. seven, no, not 16, but 18. Um, yeah. That's when I stepped out of Whangarei. But, and that's always been on my mind, how do we, you know, keep our um, students or keep everyone in the community Northland-based? Um, yeah. And I guess it's to do with just creating opportunities here in, in Northland for those uh, to grow and move forward from their studies. Um, and so, let me have, ask you the hard question. How yes. do you think we should do that? Huh. Right? That is a hard question. Um, because it's, I mean, it's you know you you look around. I'm a, I'm going to be fifty next year, right? I don't look it, you know, but I'm going to be fifty next year, and I'm thinking, what are we going to do for the next generation for the next thirty years, so that they can walk in these artists that you're growing, right? Um, that you're you know, you're nurturing and so on and put it, imparting all the knowledge and all the other other tutors are putting into and other places around Fungare are doing the same thing. How do we keep them here and what can we offer to keep them here? You know, so uh, for myself, it's and, and I've, I've sat down with um, others in, in terms of that question, that same question. Um, so for me, it's, I guess, bringing the community community together. Um, so with a provider such as myself, going to other providers who are doing the same thing, uh, such as Ingen, um, yeah. and you know, seeing what they offer, and then making those connections, and therefore, you know, from here, our students can move on to there or vice versa. Students from right. that um, provider can move on to um, here with us. Yeah. And, and it's just creating that network 
um, right. so tight that you know there's somewhere to go for um, the student yeah. or well, you know, I mean, it's but but it kind of feels like it's like and I'm gonna you know be that that guy over there actually looking at this from this from that angle so the devil's advocate right so do you see like it feels like it's like a feeder feeding from one friggin you know tutorial thing to another thing but is that a, you know do you see that as a benefit or is it because you're trying to make them have different skills than that when they walk out they're not actually just having one skill but they're having more skills or is it because you think that by having um that that different aspect of skills they are actually more educated to make a decision for themselves to stay and see what they can do or they themselves can come up with how to help themselves stay here you know i know it's a you know yeah it's a weird question so, to ask but playing the devil's advocate it, it's it's a mixture of all of that <laughs> basically what you just mentioned there it's a mixture of all of that um to be honest but um really i think it's so with our school with our school we we um, are really close with the community so um and and not in the sense of other providers that are teaching yeah. but in terms of employment uh, we have yeah. uh, not only the community that support and share our mm -hmm. views because we do have students that are jumping off um, here to move into work uh, such as uh, Creative Northland as where yep. Leonard used to work um, yeah so we we've made a really great connection with them the school has so um, and they're keeping an eye on us um, across the road yep. we have big fish and they also you know um, we have that close connection um, yeah. that i have had with them in the past and so it's right. just bringing you know everyone together and then just opening up their eyes to mm -hmm. what's possible out there and hey if if it's not for them you know then at least they've gained something from here and and know that it's there that it's there for them cool. i'm glad yeah. i played a devil's advocate on that because now we you know I, I was able to fish out the fact that you guys actually see other uh places of work and do work with them like i mean big fish is a big te uh what what is big fish anyway from what i understand is you know they're more involved in digital and stuff um you know what are they yeah so they they're a big graphic studio um, company and yep. yeah they cover a wide spectrum of um, mm. of creative design um, yeah they they they're amazing they've um, they they're one of in the, the in the past when I was at um, when I was doing film school right and we had digital digital down in, in Bacargo. They had like a, a digital filmmaking, and there was also uh, animation and all that. So, from in Bacargo, if you wanted a job, Weta was a thing. This is about two thousand four, two thousand five. Wellington, so another uh, you know another island, you know North Island, South Island. So you had to go to North Island to get a job. So if you you have students that could just walk across the street and get some work experience locally that says a lot that's a lot of benefit to your students to think about you know maybe i need to apply a bit more to what i'm doing if i want to you know why, why do i have to go somewhere else when i can have stay with my family here or whatever save on not having to move over to Auckland to go to work there you know for the same thing or stay home, like we're getting the family question. You were, you know, you're going to talk about family, rather than having to leave your family and pay that all that hundreds of dollars somewhere else, like in Auckland, for rent, for food, for whatever. But have, 
keeping that here locally, but still having that work. How do you guys uh, on the other side of that do do um, do you guys like uh, scope out your students and say this one here is it's good for big fish or that one there is good for this one or maybe he needs more or she he she whatever needs more education in the animation side let's send them over to engine room or you know to another you know uh, I think it's generator or something like that you know maybe they go to the next level of what they want maybe game design which you know what's on offer compared to that sort of side because i think this is the greatness of infirmary right there's such closeness in the having that all around you in the city so how do you guys you know that question i know it's a roundabout question but how did how do you see um when you're having students um at different levels of degree or even the business mindset about them yeah so you you kind of have to treat it as that um not everybody has are on the same level as as others um therefore um, and keeping in mind we 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 are only a foundation um provider so um right we're not expecting to send anybody out there in the field off the cuff um, yeah. However, we do um, offer uh, such employment mm. to the students um, at a, a student's level, so beginners or um, at that entry level. Um, yeah. And we've had in the past so many um, opportunities and we have given um, those opportunities to students, past students, past graduates, um, yeah. and just to name a few, um, we have had a couple um, go into um, just head first into the industry. Um, mm. and we've had some that have just tested the waters. Um, clients have approached us for um, book illustrations and mm. um, website development. And so students have taken that role on, or in the past, so uh, this is what I used to do with um, my own clients. So my own clients would approach me for work, and um, while I'm studying, or oh, studying, while I'm tutoring here, um, I'll be doing some work as well. So the students are getting a live feed of my process and yeah um, and they're free to ask the questions uh, hard questions like um, you know what um, what do you say to a client how do you, how do you approach a client um, mm. you know what you know talking about finances that's a really difficult thing um, budget yeah. Uh, in terms of your creativity, your what you're worth. So, yeah. Um, in the past, I've I've been doing that throughout, and students have picked up. And you know, I'm transparent, so I I give them yeah. um, a live feed, so to speak, um, to yeah. what the industry is like through me. Now, yeah. Um, not only that, again, we do get a lot of clients walking through these doors so they see design school and pop in and ask you know can you do can any of your students do a logo for me I'm starting up a business so then I create a brief um, for yeah. the students and yeah so it's it's a mixture of all of um, what you're saying mm. in terms of um, yeah. How do you, you know, approach a student, or where do you set them? Um, and there's there's not one level that you see a student. Um, basically, what what it comes down to me is um, um, how how do they feel about um, moving in a certain direction? Are you ready to move in that certain direction? Do you need more help? Um, and quite often you do get students saying, oh, you know what, I, I thought um, 
I wanted to go into the animation, but you know, I've been liking what the students have been coming up with with their yeah. fashion design, so I wouldn't mind tackling a bit of that. And so they're yeah. still in the creative industry, um, and it's an easy transition for them to just move yeah. over to that. Um, See, and vice versa. It's a, it's a, it reminds me like of being at um, at uh, you know at Polytech. So you start you, you're doing craft design, but you want to do uh, uh, you want to do paintings and stuff. You don't get to do that. So I, I yeah. would be at home doing Wolverine paintings that I would sell, which I only got reminded this week from right for a hundred bucks on cardboard. But at school I was doing pottery and stuff. So whereas there was no movement, right? You you don't have like you, your stuff. So when I went actually went to apply for um, you know, for my course, I had drawings. I mean, and you know, pencil draw, um, colored pencil drawings, uh, tribal style that I have, and I still kind of continue that on. But I got stuck in out of the blue. I don't know how I ended up being stuck in jewelry and glass blowing and ceramics. Yeah. So maybe my my tutor, uh, R.P. Um, you know, Keith Mahi. You know, one of the greats uh, set up the glass blowing. You know, um, there's a big gallery here, Burning Issues Gallery here in Front Ray. You know, one yes. of the four. And I'm like, what am I doing in this? But I enjoyed it. But there was no other movement away to anything else, right? Yeah. So I'm painting at home and, you know, on canvas, on cardboard, or whatever. But at school, I'm doing this, whereas at your, you know, at design school, you can move if you're not, you know, if you're not there. And I like that aspect because I think, you know, not everybody's going to come in and stick with what they, like you said, with what that, um, you know, with the square peg that they, you know, hole they've been put into. Because after a while, they realize, yeah, um, like you said, I think animation is better for me. Or, you know, I'll, I'll rather do clothing, you know, design some. Uh, cosplay or something or go more further than that and actually do a label and so so that i find that really cool and i find it really interesting that that's on offer and that's available to the students because i think that that'll make them actually be more um encouraged to attend you know yes um and um and not think about well if i do this then i'm stuck in it but you know able to move around and still get a degree at the end of it because the credits of the parents such. Um, so now six years in, right? Um, how do you feel about having been there? How many students have gone past? Uh, how do you feel about what you've done, you know, as, as a tutor back home? And now, we, and, and, that, and then after that, we'll talk about the family aspect of what you you wanted to mention earlier. Yes, so uh, now it's quite funny um, that you bring that up now because I, I feel as though I have um, come to, I guess, uh, To opening up my my own boundaries, I guess that I didn't know that were closed off. So, what well, what I'm getting at is um, now that I'm pretty much talking the talk, um, I am now in a position where okay, maybe I can do what I'm teaching or providing or tutoring. Um, yeah. So, I guess I'm I'm now more of a student. Um, yeah. Looking from a student's perspective, so now I'm starting to see uh, the work that they've been producing, and then I'm going, oh, I want to do this. So yeah. I'm putting myself out there now. I'm going, okay, if, why not? Why not? So I'm starting mm. to. Um, dabble into the fashion side of things um, that yeah. we provide here um, and hence that um, we spoke earlier about um, cosplaying so I thought you know what I'm going to try it 
you know, I've, I've never done it before um, yeah. at, at this kind of level. Um, yeah. So I thought it'd be fun, you know, and the students, when they heard, they were like, oh, yes, please, you got to do it, you got to do it. So, um, yeah. um, and it's a good opportunity right now. Um, Plunge is coming up. Um, the Benina yep. Fashion Awards is coming up, um, yep. and Armageddon is coming up. So there's a, um, yep. those three were um, a drive oh, and not only that, me to. Next, yeah, next year, Kerry Kerry, our theme is plunging art. I'm um, sorry, yes. cosplay and art. Cosplay So we're putting yeah. cosplay at the top next year because I feel like we, you know, there's a lot of creativity and, you know, Getting dressed up is fun, and I think you know wanting to do that. But last night, or maybe the day before, I was actually thinking maybe I should look at paying somebody to to, to actually design because I don't have the time. I'm so freaking busy, you know, that maybe I should pay someone to actually do a costume for me, right? Yeah. That, um, that they could design a costume for me based on one of my characters, so I can actually attend my own convention as one of my characters, not some other character, but my own character. But fashion, like, my, I'm quite skinny, as you can see. So it has to fit me right to make me look bigger. For that character, it doesn't look like some skinny little thing, you know, but actually looks good on me. And I look, and I, and I thought, how much would that cost? $250, maybe? You know, I'll provide them, you know, whatever. And maybe I'll get somebody to do that for me. And maybe next Kerry, right? I could get somebody to do that for me, and this is the this is the business aspect of cosplay that I was talking about earlier. Like you said, you know, there's all these competitions coming up, but there's also the fact that you can actually design uh, costumes to sell to other people all over the world. I've heard it happening. I watch people on my Instagram do it, you know, and I'm a good, I'm a, you know, I love cosplay. I think that's just just as good as designing and coming up with the original character. So, you, how did you end up deciding to okay cosplay? <laughs> right? Why cosplay? Why cosplay? Right. Um, so we've, we've in the past we've had a lot of students that have you know um, cosplayed um, so many times, and you know it's just been in the back back of my mind going, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. We don't teach that here or deliver that in any um, sort as such. Um, it's more textiles and fashion that we, we deliver here. So yes, you can create uh, costumes um, for cosplaying, but it's cosplaying is a, is a totally different um, set of skills uh, compared yeah. to fashion. Um, so how I came about it, I think it was just, um, for the love of fashion in the past two years that we've been yep. lacking, um, been lacking due to unfortunate circumstances, um, you know, uh, with the Bonino Awards being cancelled for the last couple of years and we've had students um, working on garments and entering the competition and you know and and find out that you know it was cancelled and so it was a, yeah. a bit of a letdown for for our students um, and and I think I've been carrying that weight over the last two years and I'm thinking well you know what yeah. it's it's out there now so I'm gonna jump on board you know just to lift the student spirits up um, yeah. and you know encourage them to to um, keep going keep doing what they do um, so if they have fun laughing while I'm um, <laughs> making mistakes doing this it's all in the learning yep. process so I'm, I'm down for it 100% um, but um, I, I have uh, a love for cosplay I've, I've been around it my life so even though I haven't really um, entered any on that level in a competition level um, I have cosplayed in the past and that's just it's basically something like Halloween you dress up for Halloween so yeah. that was my cosplay 
Um, yeah. But other than that, I've, I've had no experience um, until, yeah, this year. This year's uh, the year, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. We're, we're about one month in, so four weeks yep. in, and I'm starting to learn, you know, um, a lot more than I thought I knew um, about cosplay. Have you started your costume yet? I have. Yes, I have okay. started my well, costume. That kind of bums me out because I was thinking you would look great as Templeton. Who's you would Templeton? look brilliant at Templeton's, I'll, I'll, I'll post it up later, but Templeton's right. one of my original characters. He's actually Maori, ah. right? Okay. And, uh, and yeah, he's Christopher Templeton. I, you know, I haven't said it to anybody, but I, the character that I, that I based it on, like the look and everything is, is of a Maori actor. He's on Kiwi Maori actor. And he's got long hair and such, but wigs are always good. But yeah. he's a quite a stocky looking guy. Uh, carries two guns. Uh, you know, but it's, it's a mature reader's thing. So it's not, you know, it's not, it's for the, well, you know, fantasy, horror, supernatural character type thing. But he's kind of like, you know, Constantine from, yes. uh, you know, yeah. So, but one of the, you'd look great in him, but I'm just, I'm, the reason I mentioned it because I was just doing the coloring for the, the cover at the moment. And I've never, right. you know, I just play around. But one of the reasons I was thinking about the cosplay side of things is I'm watching this um, this um, this game, this anime based on a game called uh, Girls Frontline, and it's a mobile game. But the anime is either called Dolls Frontline or Girls Frontline, and it's about uh, it's set like in 2060s, and they're like robotic android, you know, dolls and stuff, and they have this huge gun. One of them has this amazingly huge gun it's like bigger than her and i'm thinking that would be an awesome thing to walk into a convention with it's all and i'll make it <laughs> out of foam and i'll put yeah. polystyrene as the main thing inside because you can't you know otherwise it'll be too heavy and yeah. just foam around it you know it's like it's seriously it's like a, it's like a if it was she's probably the girls and uh, like the character I didn't care, you know, anime characters on about five foot. And the gun's about six foot two or something. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool to have a huge gun at, at you know, like that, at plunge, at a convention, just sitting there on the side. And it's something like that, you know, that side of things. But then have somebody w walk up around with that, and you know, in the cosplay. But there is that other part of that which is the play part which one of my friends who's a competition winner right she won lots of competitions all over europe uh and she said there's a costume part part and then there's a play part which is you take on the role of that character uh, you kind of talk about that character you mimic what the character's actions are and so when they go into the like prop like competitions like armageddon where they pay you know, you could win the future prizes, especially over in Europe and so on. You have to, um, you know, do that thing. You do a dance, like, you know, that, that the music, whatever it is that they dance to or whatever. And I heard just recently that there is a, a convention just for cosplay in Las Vegas. Just for cosplay. Now, cosplay has been a part of um, anime, um, like, you know, other conventions. So, like, yeah. yeah, it's the fun, you know, it's a tag on thing, you know, and so it's like, uh, you know, it's anime, manga, and of course, there'll be cosplay, kind of thing. Or it's comic books, it's film and TV. Yeah, people will be dressed up and that'll make it fun. Now, it's become a part, a huge part of that, which is why I just sort of thought, we should make that part of plunge as a huge thing as well when we go to carry carry and so that not only are you dressed up as a character and i'm thinking are you thinking i'm i'm kind of thinking like are you doing flesh and blood or are you doing Yu -Gi -Oh? as oh, part of your funny. cosplay 
funny enough, um, neither, neither. I, th I thought I'd um, start simple, start simple. Okay. Um, so the character I won't spoil, but um, okay. those we'll who know me know, know what I'm um, going as, but it is a character from Arcane, the Netflix series. Excellent. Excellent. And that, um, that's the anime, um, or the animation ba um, based off the game League of Legends. That's it. I actually have a bag somewhere here. Yeah, there it is. We're, we're changing things around the other day, and there is the badge. I mean, the necklace of it, which was yeah. probably like about 2014. I bought that in 2014. So, what made you think about doing League of Legends? You know, I, I'm from that rather than what you actually are interested in as a whole, which is, yeah, you know, the other side of you, which is like gaming and stuff and trading card games. Yeah. And so on. Uh, so, I basically it came down to what would I, because I'm going in myself, entering it myself, so I'm not making this for somebody else to wear. Um, You're right. But I thought, you know, what would suit my body type um, and so on. So it kind of ticked all the boxes. I'm, um, yes, body type, yeah. yes, hair, maybe. Yeah. I'm halfway there. Tick, tick. So yeah. I just went through a t checklist. Um, out of all the characters, mm -hmm. um, especially, and I really enjoyed the, the show, the series. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it is, it is on another level um, in terms well, of I've heard animation. Good things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of animation, they've really um, stylized their their animation to fit a paintable palette, as you can say. So, yeah, we're used to cell shading, um, which is what you oh. know, traditional cartoon and animations are done. Yeah. Um, so they've they've utilized a, th a mix of 3D and um, just raw paintbrush style for animating. So it's w really well done. Um, very the reason I was putting that up there, I just realized that I've got Jinx up at the top there. Oh. Sorry about that. Apologies for that, guys. I was trying to be uh, smart and I pressed the wrong thing. But it's, I was just trying to say that I'm, I've got Jinx at the top, and that's what I was trying to trying to work uh, out yes. where she was. My cane. That's that's what I was trying to aim at and messed up the um, live stream. The other thing is there is I've got um, Lynette talking. I think she was talking about here about Benina and. Um, you know, looking forward to hanging out with backstage and hitting the stage together. And that's the cool, that's the other thing about, I think, for people with um, this whole being able to go to competitions, which is quite different to just, you know, uh, creating, a, creating a costume, meeting with your friends, but now you're seeing the love and uh, work that other people have put into their own costume. Well, from some other thing, have some other interests. So you might have a someone sort of comic books, movies, anime or manga. I've I've been to. I went to, Armageddon a few years back. 
there was someone dressed up in My Hero Academia as a frog person, you know, with the, with the frog. I can't remember the character's name. And I was like, who's that person? Like, that, that's a pretty cool costume. She was just walking around. I like, what a awesome costume. And uh, my friend Susan goes, that's from My Hero Academia. Never heard of it at that point. Yeah. Right? At that point, I'd never heard of it. Must have been about 2014. And now I have My Hero Academia, you know, um, uh, what you got? T shirt, right? Because I love it. I've seen it, right? I, I love it. I have My Hero Academia uh, baseball shirt. So, this whole thing about seeing other people wearing something like that gets you and wants, you know, makes you want to know what they're about and stuff. And I think that's a great part of it because the effort people put into that, people don't realize until you talk to them about it. Yeah. And there's so much technical side. So what have you learned on the technical side of putting this costume together? Um, oh, so much. There's so much involved in um, constructing uh, this costume or in general. Um, so. It has taken me uh, a number of tutorials online um, and some favorite uh, cosplayers that you follow. Um, I've been following f for a very long time, but really haven't yep. been, you know, active. Hence why I haven't been um, cosplaying at all. But um, I do love their outfits that they're able to create, and um, it's inspired some of my artwork in some ways. Um, and yeah, the it is a a heavy load on um, constructing your garments, and um, at on surface level, you for for myself looking at it as a new um, person cosplaying, um, I see. Um, in the beginning I was like oh yeah that, that's easy to do you know I can whip something up like that no problem yeah. until you actually uh, <laughs> sit down and get the materials and and you know you've got it all out in front of you yeah your, your mind your brain just goes oh my gosh I gotta do this this yeah. this this so yeah. um, it's a it's a learning curve no no doubt learning curve but um uh, it's a good learning curve at that, so um, I'm enjoying I'm, it. I'm, I'm laughing. Excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm laughing because I came. I just decided I was going to do one of my characters' costumes myself in 2019 for Plunge. Yeah. Just the waistcoat is sitting up there, unfinished. No. <laughs> Look at that. That's how I just left it because I was like, "This is too much." You know, this right. is way too much out of my league. I don't have time. Yeah. And I, that's why I think that, like, if you have someone who's actually designing costume, and that's their thing, just to do that, why not pay that person to do it, right? Yeah. Because, like you said, there's it, there's so much involved. And, you know, but then there's also that reward part of that, that yes. you've created that in the end. Yeah. And, and, and that's, um, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm... I'm um, actually doing this also um, not so much for the competition um, I'm just doing this for fun so um, yeah and, and obviously it is a competition but um, again I'm I'm only doing this to see if I can um, and then with the failure or success of this first yeah. one, um, then you will see uh, uh, another one spawning from from this one, and awesome. it is it will be coming from uh, one of my hobbies, whether it's Yu-Gi-Oh, Flesh and Blood, um, mm. and or um, anime. Um, awesome. Yeah. Well, we've had you here for almost two hours, and you know. I'm just so. I, I, this is probably the longest we've ever talked in one setting. Oh, you know, we've 
we've talked in passing and so on, but it's always been yeah. awesome to talk to you because we share so many, so much similar passions. But not only that, but you are nurturing and teaching so many artists, current, future, and upcoming, and so on, into the new, you know, sort of like the art world that we live in, a technologically, uh, you know, changing yeah. world. Uh, when we've gone from like pen and paper to coding uh, to, you know, to tablets, you know, yeah. uh, from pads and so on. To VR. I also, yeah, to VR now, right. So in, in writing it all up, because I don't want to hold you for too long, um, last, final last words. You've got three to five minutes to tie it all up because, you know, it's your weekend. I don't want to hold you up for too long. So yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put you on solo. You, you know, your last words, except for that alarm. Now it's gone. So five, <laughs> um, you know, a couple of minutes of whatever you want to, you know, what you see to end the whole event. And then we'll say, uh, you know, our goodbyes and so on. And, um, I hope, and I hope you enjoy your weekend, but, um, thank you for joining us, everybody who's hung out and thank you for the, comments uh lynette and i'm sure everybody's had a good time uh, but we'll be back after the last words to finish up awesome no um thank you aru uh, i do appreciate you know giving me time for this this spot um, in your program and um no it's been an absolute pleasure and it has been a long time um it's been a long time um, waiting so um, and you have approached me a number of times in the past but um, I have been busy at times so um, I thank you for you know um, staying in there pretty much and <laughs> just um, you know getting me to finally jump on and um, speak about uh, my life's journey in a sense um, in terms of where I'm at now with the design school so I um, appreciate that, uh, Aru. Um, with the design school, uh, again, uh, we do offer NCEA's levels two to four um, certificates. We also take on part-time students um, who are currently at school. Um, and um, we just deliver, or basically um, help people capture the create their creative talent is what we do here at the design school um, uh, and gaining qualifications needed to enter design courses at diploma and degree levels so um, I guess um, that's me in a nutshell um, again thank you Aru for giving me this time and um, thank you, Chat, uh, Lynette, for um, those kind words also. Um, I'll take it over back to you there, Aru. All right. Thank you guys for watching. And thank you, Phil. Um, I really appreciate it. And yeah, I think um, I'm just excited to have something like the design school here in front of eight. I think the opportunities are so much um, so much, uh, there's nothing like um, having local uh, forms of tuition where it's not expensive to, you know, where you can have students. What really amazed me, which I didn't think of before, was that you could have be still at school yes. and come and get X cross credit. Yep. And that, that stuck in my head, but I at that point I forgot to come back to it. To break it yeah, so yeah. can we just finish... Yeah, can we just finish up on that? Because I think that's uh, that's something that we can really look at um, talking about just to finish up. Yes, so absolutely. Just quickly and briefly um, uh, to add to that there, Aru. Uh, with our part-time students, uh, it is a really great opportunity for them. Um, the fact that they're taking time from a, a tertiary school um, so they're stepping out of that uh, set of rules 
and coming into the design school where we treat everyone as an individual so it's um, they have a lot yeah. more responsibilities you know that they didn't have in tertiary school that they do have here um, and it has really opened them up to um, to express more of their talent I guess and not only that they they're in a space with like-minded students um, they feel comfortable yeah. and you know s sometimes schools not good tertiary schools not um, doing so well for you um, and I guess this is a, a place that they you know you can come to and um, um, gain those credits you know those extra credits that you if this is a pathway that you're you're wanting to go down as creative industry uh, then you know design school is a place that you can come come to and gain that while you're still studying at school um, it's nothing to take away from the tertiary schools whatsoever um, if anything I do um, encourage students that are part-times that come here I do encourage them to you know stay at school complete their studies uh, because there's yep. a lot of uh, subjects that we don't cover here at the school um, and right. which is why it's important to especially for uh, numeracy and literacy um, although we briefly cover it here um, it's more beneficial if you were to stay at school uh, now for those who don't you know or, or are unfortunate to have that stable in their life then um, absolutely the design school can you know you can pick up that here at the design school um, as well as being at the school so whether you can try Excellent. it here as a trial um, or just take it on as a part-time yeah that's, so that's, that's very encouraging yeah that's very encouraging because i mean like it's i i kind of think like how stale sometimes school can be you know yes. because and that's why a lot of people it's a lot of kids you know um decide to leave because it's it's like not their thing and so if they have something like design school where they can kind of step into and go get that one-on-one -on -one encouragement that all these different things you know artistically creatively that's amongst their own peers who also yes. think like them yeah i think that's the greatest thing about that environment is that when you actually have other creatives who also think like them share the same you know? yes. yeah and so Absolutely. yeah thank you for this thank you for chatting with me today and i hopefully a lot of people get um you know who are interested or thinking about doing something uh locally creatively or like you said want to do something hobby wise different to what they're doing uh you know or someone who's looking at entering into it or someone who's done it and wants to come and upgrade there are so many opportunities at design school um Absolutely. so thank you so much phil i'll let you well, enjoy you. your weekend and um Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, until next time, uh, be safe, be well, wherever you are. Takiteano. See you next time. Namahi. <laughs>